Hey guys, BSRC here once again with RC Nightmare. This is part five of our rebuilding your nitro engine tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to put it all back together. You can see I have all the pieces of my nitro motor laid out in front of me. I cleaned everything, I checked everything, inspected it, make sure that all the parts are in good shape. I replaced my front bearing on my engine to get a new seal. So she's ready for reassembly. You will need for this a little bit of oil. I'm using Afterone oil. If you got multi-purpose oil, three-in-one oil, anything you got laying around the house will probably be okay. Uh, just don't use WD-40. That's not an oil. To start, I'm going to actually start on the carburetor for you guys. You want to take all your little pieces, make sure they're organized. And we're going to start with the barrel. This is the carburetor barrel. A small bit of oil on this thing. It slides back and forth inside of there, just a little bit. Stick it back in, and now we've got to line up this little channel here with the screw hole. This is our idle stop screw. It's actually going to line up with that channel to keep it from pulling out too far and pushing in too far. So make sure when you put it in, you line it up with that. Put the idle screw in and crank her down. At this point in time, it's not crucial to get it set to the right gap, but if you do know what that is, you might as well do it. It's about a half millimeter gap, and I'll show you that in just a sec. Screw that in all the way. Again, this will lock in the barrel so it can't fall out all the way for you. It'll hold it in place. And right in the, down the barrel carb, you want to check, push it in until it stops, and you want to look for just a tiny half, mil, half millimeter gap. That looks good. Now we have to take our barrel spring. Traxxas uses a return spring that pulls it, helps pull it back in for you. I just take my fingernail and help run it right over the lip that it attaches to. So pull it over, hold it down, and just run your finger all the way around the carburetor, and it'll lock in place. You know you got it right when the barrel snaps back in. Now you can see the spring is attached. It's pulling it back in for me. Perfect. Now we can take our seal, or our boot if you will. This goes over that whole deal. Get the edge of the boot over the lip, all the way around. And that's perfect. Should get a nice tight seal. Again, check it. There we go. You can see that it's seated perfectly. Take your throttle arm, put it back on. If you're not sure the direction, if you look real closely, you'll probably see the last spot it was on. There's a little mark that the set screw made that I'm going to line it up with so I know it's in the exact same spot. You don't have to worry about adjusting it later. Tighten down the set screw, locks it on for you. All right, next is the high-speed needle. Take the housing. There's two washers that seal it. I have one on the housing already. The other's in my hand. The fuel inlet goes on between them. Second washer, you can see how that's lined up. Now we're gonna screw it right into our inlet. Now this is a very coarse screw thread going into plastic, guys, so make sure that when you're tightening this, be very careful. Say the most common thing at the shop I see with these carburetors is people stripping them out because they cranked on this with the large pliers. It really only needs to be snug. You don't have to over tighten it. In this case, I can actually use my hand to tighten it down all the way. Nice and snug. If you just use your hand, you won't have enough force to strip it out, so it's a safe way to do it. I got that installed nice and tight. And take a high speed needle and thread it in. Thread it in all the way down until it stops, and you don't want to force this again, guys. Just really carefully. When you get to the bottom, you feel it get tight. Once it gets tight, you know you're at the bottom, and back it out four turns. That's your factory setting. Half one, half two, half three, half four. Now I know that needle is reset. And that's the carburetor. She's good to go. We'll set that aside for now. On to the engine block. We're going to start with the crankshaft and get the whole rot rotating assembly installed. Now, because we cleaned everything real well, there's absolutely no oil in this engine. And that's good for rebuilding, but not good for running. So before we put it back together, you gotta make sure you're putting oil on everything that moves. I'll show you along the way as we go. To start, put oil on the bearings. Get a good amount on the rear bearing. Drip some down on the front bearing. I like to spin it around a little bit to work it in. Then you can put your crankshaft in. Just slide it in, nothing to it. 
crankshafts in. Now we can take our piston and rod assembly. Again, a little bit of drop of oil on the top here. This pivots back and forth, so we want to make sure it's well oiled. I'll work it in a little bit. And a little drop on the big end. Now, this is the most crucial step of rebuilding this Traxxas motor. This piston and rod assembly only goes in one way. If you install it backwards, you will destroy your motor. You will crack the piston. So make sure that as you're looking at it, you see the back side here is perfectly round, and the front side has this little cutout. Also on the front side is that small oiling hole I pointed out in an earlier video. You can see a small hole drilled in the crank end of the connecting rod. That is the front side, so when it's sitting in the motor, it's facing towards the front. That's crucial. Make sure you double check that. Slide it in through the top. Fit it over the crankshaft and slide it on. You may need to finesse it a little bit. The oil will help here. Just carefully work it in there until it seats on for you. Yeah, mine is fine me a little bit, so I'm just going to rotate it back and forth just a bit to try to get the seat on there real nice. This part I only do with my hands. I don't use tools because I don't want to damage anything. Still giving me a little trouble. Again, just be patient. I'm giving it my second try here. Okay, we're going to move the crankshaft around a little bit, kind of reset it. I also find it helps to try to push the connecting rod towards one side of the piston. It'll wiggle back and forth a little bit. If you push it towards yourself, you'll give yourself a little bit more room as you install it. Here we go once again. Push it in through the top. And let it rest right on there. Okay. All right, I got it to lock on there. You can see that now the connecting rod is attached all the way to the crankshaft. And spin it around, ready for the piston sleeve. Now before we put this in, again, we need to oil it. It's completely dry right now, so just a small drop of oil on the inside of the sleeve. And I like to use my finger to just work it around a little bit, get it started. Now on the sleeve, you have a small notch on the bottom. See it right there. And that's going to line up with a small pin on the top of your motor, right below my finger. It's only going to fit that one way. So to put it on, get the piston all the way to the bottom of the motor, bottom dead center if you will. Slide the piston, piston sleeve in through the top. And as you're sliding it in, you're going to have to line up the piston into the sleeve. So you got to kind of look down the sleeve, make sure that the piston's not getting jammed. I like to rotate it back and forth a little bit. It helps line it up. If you get it lined up, the sleeve will push down real easily, just like so. Oh, I don't have it lined up with my pin. There we go. Now you can see the notch and the pin are lined up. The sleeve is flush with the top of the motor, so we know it's in all the way, just like that. And now if I spin my crankshaft, I can feel the piston and see it go all up to the top and get stuck the top of the sleeve, which is good. That's the pinch we checked before. So my rotating assembly is in. Now I need to put my back plate on. The back plate holds the starter shaft. So again, a little bit of lube on the back plate. Put the starter shaft in, like so. Spin it around to work it in a little bit. And now the starter shaft has two notches cut out. And one of these notches is going to line up with our connecting rod. The guy spinning in there. So as you put the back plate on, you're going to have to line up that starting shaft with the connecting rod. Now, on the starting shaft, we have the bottom, which is smooth, 
here, you can see it. And the top isn't smooth, it has two little notches. Again, this is another crucial point, guys. If you install this upside down, when the piston comes down inside the crankcase, if you don't have these notches on top, it's going to hit the back plate and crack. So make sure these notches are facing up, just like so. I'm going to push it in, and you can see it only goes so far. This is okay. All you need to do is spin the starter shaft until it lines up with the crankshaft, and it falls right into place. Now the back plate can be installed all the way. Put the four screws in. And as we're tightening these, we've got to do a crisscross pattern, just like before when we took them apart. So tighten one, and then cross over to the other side, tighten the other, cross over, and the last one. Now I'm not tightening these down all the way at first. You want to get them all down, and then you can tighten them down all the way. So now I can start torquing these. When I say torquing, that's a nice snug fit. I like to use a tool like this because I can't get too much force on it, just enough to get it snug. I give it a little tweak. Just enough till it gets nice and tight. You don't have to keep wrenching on it, just enough to get her, keep her snug. Okay, our back plate's on. Don't forget the small Teflon washer. It goes over the starting shaft. Our motor is almost completely assembled. All that's left to install the cooling head and the head shim. Don't forget the head shim, guys. Again, if you got yours out and it was damaged, bent, scored, burnt, whatever, replace it. Stick it right on the top of the cooling head like so. And then we'll install it. Now, the cooling head can spin right now because I don't have the bolts in, but there's only one correct way that it's going to fit. What we want to do is line up the reliefs here, and I'll show you this with a tool. Take a tool and make sure that you can get the tool down to the mounting holes, like so. See, I get both of these notches are lined up with the bolt holes on the mount. And on the other side, those are lined up. And now I can put in my five screws. If you don't put this in the right way, you'll still be able to bolt it down, but when you try to bolt your motor in your truck, you won't be able to reach the mounting bolts because this thing will be twisted and blocking it. All right, same story. You want to do a crisscross or star pattern here. Let's get one started. Cross over. Cross over. Again, almost like you're drawing a star. Cross over again. And I'm not torquing these yet. I'm just getting them screwed in all the way. All right, I got them all in. Now we're going to torque. And just a little bit here, you really don't have to torque these head bolts too much, just enough till they're snug. I'm crossing over every time, very important. All right, I got my head bolts all five tightened in the crisscross pattern. I'm going to put in my carburetor bolt here, slide it right in the side, line it up, take your carburetor. Spin it a little bit to help it line up. Make sure that you got it all the way down. You want that edge of the carburetor to be right on the edge of the motor. If it's raised off like this, you're not going to have a good seal and your motor won't run. So push it all the way down. Make sure it's right where you want it. And just tighten that nut down a little bit again. You don't have to go too crazy here. Just enough to keep her snug. And there you have it. This motor is freshly rebuilt, ready to run. Anytime you rebuild a motor, you want to make sure you run a couple tanks through it. Um, very light load, almost like a break-in. I do a Traxxas method for the break-in when I run my first two tanks, only quarter to half throttle, to give all those new, newly cleaned parts and all the replaced parts a chance to wear into each other. That's it, guys. You now know how to rebuild your Nitro RC, RC engines from beginning to finish. If you have any questions, comment below. You can post up at RC Nightmare Forums. We'll get all your questions answered there. We'll see you guys soon.